There are many ways to travel to Amsterdam from London, ranging from the plane to the train and the most epic version of all, the Stena Line Dutch Flyer Rail Sail, which uses the train, boat, metro and another train to reach the Dutch capital. Join me as we go capital to capital, city centre to city centre on this incredible overnight trip. Now let's get this show on the rails. Now here's somewhere we haven't been for a while, London Liverpool Street Station, where our epic journey to Amsterdam begins. It's not often I start an international train trip so close to where I live. The station opened in 1874 to act as a replacement for the nearby Bishopsgate Station, long since closed. In 2019, Liverpool Street was the third busiest station in the UK, handling over 65 million passengers a year. Though with the recent opening of the Elizabeth Line and things gradually returning to normal with the world, I can imagine this number will soon be surpassed. Oh, and when looking at the departure board, do note it's split for services west for destinations such as Cambridge and Stansted and east towards Essex and Norfolk, which is where we're concerned with today. The Dutch Flyer Rail Sail is a joint venture between UK train operator Greater Anglia and the Swedish ferry operator Stena Line, who provide the link between London and Hook of Holland, just outside Rotterdam. The ticket did previously cover the Dutch portion of the trip, but I'll get into this later on. For now, let's get ready to do the first leg of our journey. To enter the barriers, simply show your ticket to the member of staff and they'll let you through. Train number one is this relatively new Class 720 Aventra train, which is arriving in now. These state-of-the-art five-carriage Bombardier electric trains replace the old commuter trains out of London and the east of England region over the course of the pandemic, and I have looked at these in more detail previously on the channel. Perhaps the most difficult part of this leg is navigating through the hordes of London commuters alighting from our train. There's a lot of them as you can see. The dedicated Dutch flyer service leaves Liverpool Street at 18.45 Monday to Friday and arrives into the ferry connection at Harwich International for around 20 past 8, though there is a later departure at around 20 hundred. However, I wouldn't be as risky with this one, given you still need to go through security and passport control before boarding the ferry. These times are different on Saturdays and Sundays at 19.36 and 20 hundred respectively. My reason for heading to the front of the train will be explained shortly as we hop on board, part of me wishing we had a 10 car 720 like the one next to us. One gripe I have with these trains is the extremely narrow 2x3 seating, so it's best to arrive as early as possible to one of the 2x2 seats towards the front and rear of the train. We'll be with Greater Anglia as far as Harwich International, where we then change onto the Stena Line Ferry for the eight-hour overnight journey across the North Sea to Hook of Holland. From there, it's a Rotterdam metro journey as far as Skierdam to travel the final leg to Amsterdam Central with an expected arrival of just before 11am Central European time. Right, it's now time to begin our epic voyage to Amsterdam, so sit back and enjoy the ride. We depart London Liverpool Street around a minute late at 18.46. It's worth noting that this train has additional stops on Route 2, the first of which being Stratford Regional, indicated by the Queen Elizabeth Stadium in the background, which is also the last stop in London and one of the UK's busiest railway stations. We then travel further along the Great Eastern Main Line into the county of Essex, travelling comfortably at our 720's top speed of 100 miles an hour. The more major stops in the county will be the cities of Chelmsford and Colchester though it's worth noting that the latter station isn't actually in the city itself, located a few miles away. That being served by Colchester Town Station, located around a five minute ride away from here.
Manningtree is where more frequent trains serve Harwich International outside of London, and where we now diverge from the main line to the Harwich branch. This is also a good time to point out two things. The first being that the Dutch Flyer service also runs from Cambridge and Norwich via the section of track to the left. And the second being that my ticket was only checked at this point due to there being no guards between London and Colchester. The next stop will be Harwich International. The Harwich branch, more commonly known as the Mayflower line, is easily one of my favourite branch lines in the east of England especially with the picturesque scenery of the Stour River in the background, though that's soon blocked by the view of our vessel over the North Sea tonight, but let's get into that shortly. For now, we arrive into Harwich International a nice few minutes early, successfully completing the first leg of the trip. Now hold on, let's not get too comfortable. From here, we go inside the ferry terminal, which is directly accessible from the station. It was a bit of a wait to head into security, so I bought some snacks from the vending machine and killed time the only way I know how, by doing a bit of train spotting. As much as I do love seeing state-of-the-art modern trains in the East Anglia region, it just isn't as fun anymore as an enthusiast with the old stock gone. Ah well, plenty for me in the Netherlands. I was allowed into security and passport control a lot earlier than expected, which was fairly straightforward and only lasted around 10 minutes, including the queue. There's no need to take out liquids or electronics, and there's a prompt passport check, fairly similar to the Eurostar, which I've looked at on this channel before. Now one thing I was asked was the reason for my visit to the Netherlands, which I don't think I've ever been asked leaving the UK before, only upon arrival into the intended country. Anyway, after this, you're handed your ticket and it's then a brisk walk to our Stena Hollandica ship, which is pretty hard to miss as we walk right next to it. This gargantuan vessel was constructed in 2009 and is one of two Stena line U's on the Harwich to Hook of Holland crossing, the second one being the Stena Britannica, which as we speak is preparing to do the reverse journey to ours at the other end of the line in the Netherlands. We're now on board, checked in, and ready to settle in to the second leg of this trip. This ship is basically a floating hotel. It's massive and there's plenty to do. However, I'll go into this after I check out my room, which is right here. To enter, simply place your ticket inside the reader as you would a key card. It's a bit dark in here, so let's get a little light in here first before we check out the room. This is the standard cabin offer that Stenaline provides. Note that this is the cheapest room available, and booking the cabin is compulsory for an overnight crossing. Whilst you can do a day crossing, bear in mind it will take a full work day of eight hours to reach the Netherlands, and the cabin really adds to the novelty of being at sea in my opinion. Okay, let's check out the features of the room. Yes, there is a TV here, though I couldn't really find anything interesting except the CCTV of lorries boarding the ship. Don't let the bunk bed fool you. Unless you're traveling with a companion when booking, all rooms are solo occupancy, as is the case with me. The bed was comfortable enough for seven to eight hours. My favorite thing about the room, however, was the ensuite bathroom, which has a toilet, sink, and a shower. I'm also pleased to say the hot water was working perfectly, so I'll be able to freshen up nicely in the morning. A thermostat is also present for temperature adjustment, and just adjacent is a coat hanger for storing suits or other clothes. The rather spacious desk contains both European and UK power sockets, making it very versatile for charging devices. An emergency phone accompanies it, but fortunately it wasn't used on this trip. Overall, it's a pretty decent room and will do nicely for the 8 hour crossing to the Netherlands. That being said, it's time to look around the ship a bit more. Several duty-free shops are located on the ship, however, they shut at 8pm and aren't due to open again until 6.30am Central European time, so an hour before I'm due to leave the ship. But that's fine, as my main reason for coming down here is open, the onboard restaurant. There's great variety here, and plenty of options for those with specific dietary requirements, such as vegetarians. 
There was a nice selection of drinks on offer too, though in the end, I decided to go for the draft Pepsi, which has to be the most I've ever paid for a glass with no refills. As for my main course, I ended up going for the rather fitting option of fish and chips, which cost me £15.08, £4 pound of which was for the Pepsi with no refills. Though bear in mind, you're always going to pay more for the convenience of eating on a ship, as you would for a train. Plus I've had worse places to have my dinner in. After I finished dinner, I decided to head out on deck for a bit and take in my last bit of fresh air on British soil and also watch a few vehicles board the ship. One advantage of doing this journey in the summer is it's not exactly complete darkness yet, meaning there's a stunning view of the sky at dusk, though it was late enough for the ship's onboard basketball court to be closed. Maybe one for a day crossing someday. For now, I'd had a long day, so I decided to head back to my room shortly afterwards. I did try and connect to the free Wi-Fi to relax and unwind to a movie, however it really struggled to connect. I didn't fancy paying the £7 for the premium Wi-Fi, so I just ended up waiting for the departure. Speaking of which, as is a common theme with most trips I do, it appears we're late casting off. We finally left at around half eleven, which also signalled my opportunity to call it a day. As I head to bed, I hope you're enjoying the video so far, and if you are, please subscribe to the channel for more weekly content like this. It's free and the best way to support my work. Thanks! Okay, good night, and I'll see you in the morning. Six and a half hours later. And a very good morning from the North Sea, or at least I'd like to say that. One of Stena Line's alarms woke me up at around 5am, but that's one way to get passengers promptly off. Now let's open the porthole and check out our view over the North Sea. In the distance, a wind farm can be seen, which is one of many offshore sites located across the North Sea. Right, time to freshen up and get ready to disembark. Now, breakfast. Pre-ordering the night before helped skip the queues. However, I decided against it, given I already spent enough on dinner last night. Instead, I decided to head out to the deck and take in the stunning views of daybreak in the Netherlands. I honestly don't know why I've put off cross-border ferries for so long. The last time I rode one was, would you believe, 2011 on a school trip to France. Anyway, just on the horizon is Hook of Holland, and as we prepare the lengthy process of docking the ferry, that completes leg two of my 13 hour odyssey. Well, there was some massive confusion as I was getting off. One of the Stena Line staff members directed me along with the driver pool, which resulted in my plan to avoid the queues backfiring and getting caught up in this massive crowd as we disembarked. Nevertheless, we're now officially in the Netherlands, well, not quite, there's still passport control, and ready to move on to our next form of transport, which can be seen just out the window. More on this in a little bit. A long walk across the footbridge is then met by an even longer queue at passport control. No thanks to a certain decision seven years ago, though we don't get into politics on this channel. Now we just remain patient and wait. One eternity later. I kid you not, I was in that passport control for over an hour, but that doesn't matter. What's important now is we're officially in the Netherlands. Welcome to Hook of Holland. The town's name in Dutch is Hook van Holland, and literally translated means Corner of Holland, due to its location in the southwest corner of the province. The English translation of Hook is a false cognate of the Dutch word Hook, and has become the official English name of the town. Just outside the ferry terminal is the original Hook van Holland Haven station, 
which has been disused recently as part of the Rotterdam Metro extension to Hook van Hollen Strand Station, not too far away from here, which brings us on to leg three and the arrangements for my onward Dutch travel. The Dutch Flyer Rail sale ticket previously covered the journey from any Greater Anglia station in the UK to any station in the Netherlands, including Amsterdam. However, NS pulled out of the arrangement partway through the pandemic and has not participated in it since. As you can see here too, most of these people are passengers from the Stenerline ferry I rode to get here, and the ticket machines don't appear to be working properly. One advantage of the Netherlands relying on contactless payments is you can use it for any city's metro and all NS services across the country, though do be careful of the forex charge. The metro's arrival was imminent and the charge wasn't big for the nature of the journey, so I just ended up using this. My next stop using the metro is Skierdam Centrum to connect to an NS intercity service to Amsterdam, though if you want places such as Utrecht or Arnhem, it's best to stay on until Rotterdam's Alexander station to change for an NS intercity service. Our train is this Bombardier 5700 series Flexity Swift stock, dating from 2015 to 2017. So, let's get on board and get going to Skierdam. As we leave Hook van Holland, passing the site of the old station reminds me of something. Did you know this line used to be an NS Sprinter line until 2017? It was closed in favour of the Rotterdam Metro Line B extension to Hook of Holland, which became operational in September 2019, so just before the pandemic. The service between this period was operated by a rail replacement bus. We also have a perfect view showing how large our Stella Hollandica ship is. It's absolutely incredible. We have quite a number of stops before reaching Skierdam, Maslaus West being one of them. We then cruise at speeds of around 90 kilometers per hour, which isn't too bad for a metro in the grand scheme of things. After around 24 minutes of travel time and a switch from the overhead lines to third rail, we arrive into Skierdam Centrum to complete leg three and with just about enough time to connect to the NS Intercity train, which will take us on to Amsterdam. Our next step is to exit the barriers to the metro platforms and once again re-enter the barriers, albeit for the NS platforms. And very quickly too, as our train is due in a few minutes. NS Sprinter and Intercity trains to Amsterdam, Den Haag and Haarlem depart from Platform 5 at Skierdam Centrum. For trains to Rotterdam, that would be Platform 4, using these NS Verm trains bound for Russendal. You may remember my review of one earlier this year if you're a regular viewer. My Verm set pulls in shortly after the first one leaves. Services to Amsterdam Centraal depart every half hour with stops at major cities such as The Hague in between. The Verms are double-decker trains. Those who require disabled access will find it on the bottom deck in one of these six carriages. If you're able to, the top deck is recommended as it provides the best views. We depart from Skierdam Centrum on time at 9.46 Central European time and begin the final one hour leg to the Dutch capital.
Our first major city en route to Amsterdam is the third largest city in the Netherlands, Den Haag Holland Spoor, or The Hague. HS Station is the second largest station serving the city, and the oldest too, opening in 1843. As we head out of Den Haag, we pass the Dutch Railways icon, the Koploper, which dates from the late 1970s. I will have a video on this weird and wonderful train out soon, so do subscribe to the channel so you don't miss it. Overtaking the train gives us a brief view of Dutch greenery before meeting up with it again at our next stop, Leiden Central. Much of the route into Amsterdam takes us over some stunning views of the Dutch countryside. One of the advantages of the Netherlands rail system, besides its efficiency, is that whilst they have very few high speed lines, most of the key routes are very scenic on sunny days such as this. Haarlem, our last major city before entering the Amsterdam suburbs. A city known for its amazing shopping, I really need to visit someday, despite the shaking of my wallet at the thought. Well, we're sadly coming to the end of our journey now, and I say that because I really enjoyed it. I've flown and taken the Eurostar to Amsterdam before, but this has to have been the most fun way to do it. My only complaint is the reduced ticket integration with Dutch rail services, which now makes things a lot more complicated and adds additional costs. Hopefully NS decide to return to the partnership sooner rather than later. As for my ticket price, this Odyssey cost a total of £124 for the boat, cabin and Greater Anglia train, plus an additional €4 Euros and €17.20 Euros for the metro and train on the Dutch side totaling around £140 or €155, Euros, which is still exceptional value for money considering you both save on a hotel and basically sleep and arrive in Amsterdam. Speaking of which, we arrive nice and on time into Amsterdam Central at 10.55 Central European time on the dot. I'm interested to hear your thoughts too. What did you think of this method of getting from London to Amsterdam? Do let me know your thoughts in the comments below. In the meantime, I hope you enjoyed this video today as much as I enjoyed making it and taking this journey. Please do like and share the video if you did to aid the channel's growth and do consider subscribing and enabling notifications for more content such as this every Friday at 5 p.m. Well, it's time to look around the city and enjoy this lovely day. So thanks so much for watching as always and until next time, I'll see you around.